Welcome to this special edition of Universal Parenting Clinic. On this show today, I'll be discussing the necessity of teaching your child to be responsible. Yes, teach your child to be responsible. This will be in three parts, domestic, general, and practical. So this will take longer than our usual time because I will teach cooking practical on the show too. Please, and I plead passionately with you on this, follow our earlier advice on the coronavirus pandemic. Obey the official directives on personal and public safety always. Stay at home until decided otherwise. Maintain the social distancing and stay at home policies always. Remember proper hygiene as well. Keep yourself and your family safe. We appreciate the medical personnel and all frontline staffs who are putting their lives on the line daily for the safety of all. May God continue to comfort the families of those bereaved. And I pray for soonest recovery unto those undergoing treatments worldwide. And to you all, do have a happy Easter celebration and remember the reason for the season. Now that many parents are at home with their children on long holidays, many have been calling me to say they are bored and their kids are becoming annoying. What should we do? Some parents also claim the kids are becoming addicted to their phones, TV sets, and computer games. I decided, therefore, to drop the topic for this week because of the increasing calls and messages daily. The reality is that this is a glorious opportunity for all parents to correct parenting mistakes and put things right because many may not have this type of freedom and time with the whole family together for this long again and many in their lifetime because of multiple personal reasons. So, utilize this time very well because to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. So, use this all the day time to make your children responsible. Let me start with my personal story today. Though I'm a male child, my parents didn't spare me in domestic chores and I'm better off. That's why I don't see what ladies do domestically that I can't do. I followed my wife to nearly all major antenatal days of her kids, even when I was to be denied access at our first child's birth. The matron told the nurses that I am an exception because I attended all the antenatal sessions and I was by then fully aware of the proceedings. I handled most of the postnatal duties too. I birthed our kids from birth after our parents left after their early support program. I did the cleaning and changing of nappies. I became an expert in those stores. My wife is a great cook, but I cooked more when we were newly married and whenever she was pregnant. Our food is of international standard. Mine is intercontinental. You can ask her and my friends who visit regularly. I washed our clothes more when we were young couple before the kids became matured. Though initially people thought that something was wrong with me. No. It's the home training that I was given. I do a lot more than I can explain on one topic. At least when you see my wife looking fresh and young, you know why. I don't overlabor her with being the exclusive sole person with domestic chores. This is also not because I have nothing to it. I was into tribunal wars daily then. I also attended my chamber's duties and court daily. And as the head of property management and other social religious activities, I was more than busy. 
But I created time. I didn't need to struggle. It's a way of life to me. Even now, I still do multiple works. I'm including this parenting show too. Your schedule should not be a barrier. All you need is to be responsible. Be responsible in parenting and teach your child to be responsible. Now, let's come back. Yes, the kids will need to study at this holiday period. So support their academics. Check online materials to support. They will need to also rest, play, and relax. But get your schedules right because this is also a time for children to learn to be responsible citizens too. Teach your children multiple domestic chores and life experiences daily, including cooking lessons, so they don't depend on junks for the rest of their lives. I didn't know I will be making this documentary on this topic today. I would have recorded bits and pieces of all we've done with the kids, but it's not too late. Yesterday, I engaged the boys on perfecting their skills in the production of jollof rice. Oh, it was delicious. They cook most meals for us nowadays. We worked on the garden too. I've engaged the children in painting and redecorating the whole house. The taping, scrapping, marking, paint selection and materials. At the end, we painted and decorated the whole house. Today, you will join me as I prepare the meal with the children. Meals for Easter celebration, and part of which we will share with friends and the underprivileged, and those struggling to cope because the fast food business has been on holiday too. We will prepare fried rice, meat pie, and yam porridge. We will also prepare chicken pie. We will prepare even cookies. This edition is bound to be special. While the kids are packaging the ingredients, let me tell you this. Give your child responsibilities from infancy. Engage him or her in domestic chores. Always delegate reasonable domestic responsibilities to your child. He may not be perfect from the onset. Let him make mistakes. But believe me, as time goes on, he will be a master of several things and will grow to be a responsible adult. Let your child clean, pick his plate after me, carry his food to the dining table, clean and wash his teeth, bathe, not his shoelaces, and feed himself. Ask your child to support you in domestic duties relative to the age and abilities. As he or she grows, teach and let your child be involved in cooking and making simple meals personally. Don't over pamper your child to failure. It's good to provide for your child. Don't deny him unnecessarily. However, don't overdo things. Don't think giving him or her everything will make him a success. Lots of parents are the architects of their children's misfortune and failure in life due to too much pampering and unnecessary indulgence. There are times when you need to say no to a child's desire or request. Don't bring him up, making him rely on you for life or believing he can get everything just by asking. He needs to learn certain art facts and realities of life. You don't want your child to be an ignorant adult or a spoiled brat. He needs to be prepared to face challenges and challenging situations of life by you. Life is not bed of roses, you know. He needs to learn to struggle on his own and to do things for himself and by himself. He needs to know there is the possibility of failing and must be allowed to learn that it is not wise to stay down after a fall, but be allowed to understand how to rise. Picking the child after every fall may become habitual, and he may be denied that lesson of life. 
even though it may be reasonable to do so sometimes when necessary. However, when he should be able to lift himself up with little effort, allow him that pleasure. You will be surprised at how strong he will stand. It is a pity that some parents overindulge their children to the extent that even their female child can't cook the simplest of meals. It's a shame if your daughter can't prepare simple meal for herself, then how will she feed her husband and children? Is it with junk food or with the help of meals or by relying on fast food always? Start now during this holiday before it's too late. Yes, provide for your child, but don't go overboard in doing this. It is part of teaching responsibility and bringing up a responsible child. When you teach the child to know that it is impossible to get everything in life just by placing order. Many can't even go to buy the fast foods now. They make order for delivery of everything. What type of parents are you? Now, many are crying and exposed because the fast food outlets are closed due to the lockdown. Teach him or her the realities of scale of preferences too because human wants are unlimited and the needs to satisfy them are however limited, which led economists to design the theory of opportunity cost and choices, hard choices that must be made in life. In short, if you cannot provide that request, tell your child without missing words. Even where you have the ability but you consider certain demands outrageous, make alterations and restrictions to such luxurious demands. You do not want a spoiled bride as a child. A child who cannot help herself to do simple things. A child who cannot work personally to be somebody in life. A child who was raised to be a dependent for the rest of of his or her life. Furthermore, it is good for kids to know the challenges of life they are likely to come across as they grow in life. Let the child experience what it means to be refused, to be denied, and also to experience failure. A lot of children break down in tears at the experience of little challenge or discomfort once they are independent of their parents. Many such spoiled children become easy priests because they can easily take advantage of their weak resolve and ignorance. Similarly, and of major concern is the increasing rate of suicide and depression among youths who could not undo difficult times and challenges. Because they have survived in life, with the special privilege of having everything and anything available. When they experience tough times, they easily carve in and throw in the towel, or become endangered physically, mentally, and psychologically. I will teach you more of your responsibilities on the topic of suicide prevention another week. Give your child responsibilities, reasonable responsibilities, that are suitable for the age and circumstances and let him or her do basic things personally and freely. Allow your children the occasional independence of taking certain decisions and to take responsibilities for certain actions too. Yes, he or she may fail occasionally, but it's better now when he or she is still under your training and when you can still make necessary adjustments and corrections with love than when it has become too late or when you are not available to provide that necessary guidance and support. Inspire your child to take up domestic responsibilities and gradually give reasonable room for development with time. Don't expect immediate perfection and don't be put off by mistakes and initial errors. Thanks and let's go and cook now. Yes, this is lovely. You can see that everything sorted now, mixed. And you can see from the tasting, 
is tasting delicious. It's already even before we put the we put the yam. The porridge, you can be sure of the delicious porridge now. Uh, this is the yam. I need special time to teach them how to peel it so it doesn't become itchy. Now you can see that's the that's him uh, slicing the uh, peeled yam into pieces now. Yes, that's the peeled and sliced yams. Yes, as you can see, we are nearly there now. That's our porridge getting shape and moving on. As you can see, we are making uh, progress with it now, and that's uh, everything getting set. You can check, you can check and see how lovely it is. And by the time we finish, we will know that we've done a good job. Nearly done. It won't be long. Yeah, this is lovely. We are nearly there. Our porridge is getting set. Look, you need to stir it and you can you need to also taste it uh, so that all the ingredients, everything you'll be sure. You check if you need to put more uh, oil or if you need to add salt and then it's getting it's melting together as well and that's where you get all those uh, succulent uh, stalks from. And then you still have some uh, parts of the yam remaining and standing. These are the ingredients you are going to need for meat pie. Not too much. Uh, diced onion, I just cut this. You need the flour, you need oil, and you need table salt, and, uh, pepper, carrot, you have potato. If you don't want, you may not pull that. You have egg, you have meat, butter, and some of the ingredients you can see here. You need the chopping board, you need the roller, and then you also need the baking powder to make it a quality one. Now you can see one of the keys missing the flowers. I put salt, baking powder, butter, sugar into the flour, and it's going to mix it now. Yes, you can see the keys missing foreign egg. Yes, so it's going to mix everything together now. Now you can see another child cutting all the ingredients now into pieces. Yes, you can see now it's become a solid mixed flour now. So it's running it. Yes, you can see now it's a one solid mixed flour now. Eva little evaporated milk uh, was added. So it's going to be covered now and put in the fridge for one hour while we continue to work on the other ingredients. Now you can see the next process, all the ingredients are now put together combined. It's putting flowers into it. Yes, you can see that's over an hour now. And we get that's being brought out of the fridge and now we are slicing it. And then it's the flowers on the floor on this chopping board is so that it doesn't become sticky. And that's what he's doing now, slicing it into pieces. After cutting into pieces, he's now rolling it to make it flat and easy to package. And you can see the first one he did, that's it here. That's meat pie ready to go into the oven. And that's it. That's it. Easy. Now you can see that it's uh, flattened already. So it's pouring the stores already made inside. Uh, easy. You can make some of these things without having to waste money. You can see it. Yeah. 
can see meat pie already homemade is it easy for you to do is it easy yes okay that's fine Yeah, that's us now. You can see the kids have made it. We have a couple of them here. Meat pie, fish pie. You see, that's one step. We're now going to put this in the oven. You see how easy it is? Precious time spent. Now it's time to garnish it with egg. So it can add flavor to it and also make it come out fine. As you can see, that's what it's doing now. Now we are going to pull this tool in the oven. The oven is already switched on and getting warm. So we're going to put it there now. Yeah, you can see how he's putting it. Inside the oven. Put the second one there as well. Okay, guys, let's see what you've done. Uh, you can also join me out there, see how lovely it, it looks. Now, you can see that's it. That's, uh, that's meat pie, fish pie done and looking lovely now that's the job done well done guys that's good yes uh, i i just hope you've been able to learn some things i mean in all the cookings we've done so far oh yes oh yes plenty oh that's great and now we are going to start uh, uh, the preparation for uh, fried rice as you know fried rice is delicious if you do it right now these are the ingredients that you are going to need as rice. I mean, you see the whole that's you have onion there, and you have lots of other stuffs. You have the meat, vegetable. You have the curry, the seasoning, and you have salt. And then you see the carrots. That's what I'm cutting there now. And by the at the end of the day, we are going to go through the stages. Uh, you see the difference between fried rice and jollof rice as we go on yes guys let's see look this is fried rice look at it this is lovely yes let somebody taste this taste a little of it but let me show you look at it as the fried rice done by you that's lovely taste it how does it taste oh thank you it's lovely clap for everybody clap for yourself that's a great job that's for George yes that's fried rice for you thanks very much now you can have that's serving. Viewers at home, you can see what great things you can do. You need to engage the kids, let them do something. And once, I'm not talking of perfection now, but this is perfect. But gradually, they will get there. And this is lovely. At least you know what ingredients have been used. They've not put anything that could be dangerous to your head. And then, it's cheaper. And we're not going to finish everything. The jollof rice we did yesterday, we still have some left in the fridge and everything we've been eating for a couple of days, they've been produced from home and this is great. Thank you once again guys. Now we want to prepare chicken pie just now. Uh, the process of uh, mixing and everything about the flowers uh, are similar to the same as the meat pie and the fish pie. The only variation mainly will be that it's not going to stay long in the fridge like the other one. And also some of the ingredients, there may be variations in them that we're going to use chicken instead of fish and instead of meat. Let's check and see how far we go with the chicken pie. Oh, this is lovely. Look at it. You can see it yourself. It's lovely. Thank you, guys. Yes, uh, guys. Is there any other thing we need to do before uh, we pack the flowers and the ingredients for baking away? Cookies. Uh, yeah, cookies. Okay, we do cookies then. 
It's not anything difficult. In the same process of uh, the mixture of flowers and sugar and some of the ingredients, I uh, will go ahead and do one. We will make some cookies. I forgot. You need to enjoy your cookies while at home. We'll do more now, and you see how easy. Okay. Guys, let's check and see the outcome of our cookies today. Oh my god, this is lovely. Yeah, that's a cookie for you. That's cookies, you can swear. So guys, let's check our cupcake and see how it, how it looks. Oh, look. Look at this. That's lovely. You see, that's cupcake. I mean, we, we have enough to go around and we we'll also make more so we can share with our neighbors yes i also use the opportunity of this holiday to uh, teach the kids on how to improve on their skills like barbie i mean you can see now uh, this is it you see how to adjust it i'll show you as you as you go on how to adjust all everything there it's easy and like all the things i've taught you once you, you are going to try it now you can always do your own shaving and you can also bab like i've done for you is there any question which one which one sharper which one makes it sharper yeah it's sharper look it's sharper when you turn it like this you see that the blade comes out if you turn it the other way but if you close it it's sharper and if you put it it scraped everything so i will show you how to adjust and how to use all the all the blades when you put this when you put this for instance it covers the sharper ones and that reduces the ability to cut and that can give you smooth edges so guys you see we are making progress at this level you need uh, the number three to make it so that where you are working on the top That's the show this week on Universal Parenting Clinic. Thanks to those buying and recommending the book, Parenting Without Tears. Buy your copy today. Join thousands of our Facebook friends because very soon we'll be having our online counseling and question or answer live show. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so as to receive the special notifications and other benefits. But remember, teach every child to be responsible. Make all children responsible citizens. I believe strongly that through this universal parenting clinic and with proper understanding of the book, Parenting Without Tears, together, we all can promote wellness in families and in the world. We can stop the tears from the children, parents and families. We can kick racism, fraud, incivility, corruption, wickedness, several addictions, violence, and the series of antisocial behaviors out of all families and the whole world. And at the same time, we can promote all the positive desires and aspirations towards the well-being of the children, parents, and the world at large. Till I come your way again next week. I am the parenting advocate in the house, Michael Benga Bibilari MGB, Mr. Parenting. Think about responsibilities in parenting. Think parenting. Talk parenting. Be passionate about parenting. Don't just be a parent. Stop posturing. Be a real parent, a responsible parent. A parent indeed, parent well.